Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 19, and holy shit. Wow, what an episode. Nora, what the hell happened to you? Let's talk about this, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, I'm so excited to talk about this episode with you guys, because... As you know, last episode was definitely the best episode of last of this season, sorry. The Godspeed episode, so Nora's origin story, we found out how she was working with Reverse Flash, how Godspeed played into everything, and you know, how Nora got her powers, how she became who she is today. Really amazing episode. So naturally I was super excited for this episode. The trailer teases, time travel, you know, Iris in the future and everything like that. So I was excited. But, oh my god, the introduction of the negative speed force, let's talk about this. Nora loses it in this episode, so we're not going to be going through this chronologically, but I'm going to go over the bit I want to talk about first. So she loses it, absolutely loses it. When Iris time travels, she's there, Iris tries to get her to come back in time, but she's still mad about Barry, and because prior to this she's been attempting to actually tap into the negative speed force the speed force that reverse cr flash created it was revealed in this episode we don't know how but it gives her the ability to travel throughout time and basically no one who's attached to the speed force will be able to actually know where she is but obviously reverse flash will be able to know because he created it he is part of the negative speed force and so she fails to actually harness the negative speed force at the start of the episode because she doesn't have that anger and rage but as soon as Iris comes up and she reminds her of Barry and you know all the pain that she's suffered in the past you know with Godspeed and everything so she's able to finally tap into the negative speed force and she gets red and fucking purple lightning it was so cool I was freaking out I was literally just there like this is everything I wanted, and just the fact of how she looked when she had the red lightning coursing throughout her body, it was just absolutely magnificent. It was like she had turned into a version of the Reverse Slash, Reverse Nora, as I've been calling her just today, and so just amazing to see her, like, with the red and purple lightning, so it takes away the yellow lightning. I'm guessing that's just sort of because everyone who's a speedster normally starts off, or at least good speedsters, starts off with yellow lightning. And I think the purple is due to it being Iris and Barry, because Iris had purple at that special time. So she has this special connection to the speed force that is purple. So she still has that, but the normal speed force colour turns red because it's part of the negative speed force now not the normal speed force so that is why the colors are like that and we get this montage sequence with her actually running and she goes through the portal the portal's red into the negative speed force not blue like the speed force and she goes through and she gets flashes and these flashes are flashbacks and it is so sick this montage this montage is so cool you see the pain and anger with inside her just consuming her and this rage is exactly what Thorn obviously had at one point and so you see Leah actually getting killed by Godspeed you see her actually trying to kill her dad earlier in the season when she was taken over and all these different instances of pain in her past that come up and help her tap into the negative speed force I don't know if she's actually subconsciously doing it but I think because she tried to tap into the negative speed force prior in the episode it sort of fueled her anger for iris and you know with iris turning up for barry essentially so i think that was the reason why she was sort of going totally off hand she was going absolutely nuts in front of reverse flash and iris and she was back in reverse flash she was like oh eobard's helping me mom and then she just absolutely snapped and this snap I think was definitely helped by the fact she tried to tap into the negative speed force and this just sort of set the fuse she runs off she has that montage she runs through the, the negative speed force she actually is running throughout time and she's being consumed by this anger and it was just so so cool I'm 
so gassed about this. I think that was maybe the best moment of the entire season. It was mind-blowing to me, and yeah, wow. I can't wait to see what they do next episode. We'll talk about that once we get to the ending of this episode, once we start talking about that. But Thorn helps Iris after she's run away, after Nora's run away, and she's supposedly back in 2019. So Thorn essentially helps Iris, or tries to help Iris, to find Nora. And before Iris actually leaves with Ralph, Reverse Flash actually smirks and this just sends sort of chills up my spine because you know even Iris was able to notify and tell Barry at the end of the episode she definitely thinks Thorn actually feels for her so not in a romantic way but like in a fatherly way there is a connection between them and I think definitely that smirk also signifies yes she's being manipulated he's manipulating her for his own good but we don't know what just yet, but that's definitely a signifier for that. And so, it was just kind of amazing to see Iris and Reverse Flash back together, because we haven't seen that this season, that was a first. And also, Ralph came face to face. I'm not sure if Ralph has actually seen Reverse Flash before, so that's very interesting. And so, that smirk was just amazing. So, she believes him, and knows he is manipulating Nora somehow, as she reveals later to Barry in the episode. Oh my god. Alright, let's move on and talk about some other stuff. So, at the start of the episode, we have Barry versus Iris. They both start freaking out, and Candice and Grant do such a good job with their performances at the start of the episode, and it continues throughout the whole episode. But them actually going apeshit on each other was amazing. True talent right there. And it really was both sides that actually had a point. They both have a point. I'm not sure what side I'm on, I think I'm more towards Iris's side in this instance, but I can see both sides, and I think Barry is sort of finding what he's doing, I could definitely see that happening to anyone, like if you find out your nemesis is working with your daughter, you might have that snap reaction, I can understand that, but I think I would be a bit more sympathetic towards Nora, well that's what I'm feeling right now, so that is all sort of the root cause for Nora tapping into the negative speed force. So in turn it was Barry's fault that she's been taken over by the negative speed force or whatever's happening. Alright, so Sherlock in this episode actually tries to leave. Well, he thinks his sort of work here is done, but then he ends up staying. So that's nice to see him sticking around because I think he was a really... Well, he is a really great addition to the season. I've been loving him. He's definitely one of my favourites versions of Harrison Wells so yeah great to see him sticking around all right so let's move on and talk about the next bit so this is as we head towards the end of the episode we're going to skip a bit and we'll go back to the Killer Frost stuff but we see Barry and Iris having this really nice scene at the end of the episode when they finally have a talk about what happened at the start what's been happening why they've been so distant and they have this really, really sweet moment where the Flash theme plays in the background and it just really, really touched me. I thought it was amazing and it really kind of just solidified the idea that both sides have a point and they come together and they realise they have to be a family and that was a big theme in this episode, family. And at points, maybe it got a bit tongue-in-cheek with the Killer Frost family stuff, but we'll talk about that in a second, but really... This moment really touched me towards the end of the episode. But then we move on and we see that Thorn actually cares about Nora. So she, well, Iris actually reveals that to Barry at the end. And so we see a parallel or a reflected shot from season one, or it could have been season two, correct me if I'm wrong. But when Matt Letcher's version of Reverse Flash shows up, he runs, you see the sort of ground and the leaves are sort of fluttering over it, it's all at night, and in this version, one by one, the lights actually blow up because of the energy around them, and you see this massive parallel with Nora actually showing up in 2019, and she's been absolutely taken over by the negative speed force. Her eyes are coursing with red darkness, but also, I'm guessing it's totally just all compressed lightning inside her eyes, that's why it's all sort of compact rather than not flickering but it looks like it's seared into her head and wow that was such a great way to end the episode 
because now I'm absolutely so excited for the next episode. Like, what's going to happen with Nora? And is she essentially this version of Inerta? So, reverse Nora. I think she's definitely going to be chasing after Barry next episode. And you can be damn sure some shit's going to go down next episode with reverse Nora as I'm dubbing her. So, she still has the red. She has the purple lightning. It's coursing throughout her body as she runs. She stops. And it's just reflected of that season 1 or season 2 shot of Reverse Flash turning up. So she's here, she's back from the future, and he she's here with malicious intent, most likely because she's been overtaken by the negative speed force. So is she evil? Like, what the hell is going on? It does seem that way. It seems that she's been overtaken by this darkness, and we know in the comics... This has happened many times pre-Flashpoint, but also after Flashpoint, the negative speed force has been able to eat up people essentially because the negative speed force feeds on the normal speed force, so it is the negative side, it just sort of takes energy from it and eats away at it. But if Reverse Flash, who created it in the comics and he created it on the TV show, if he gives it to someone else, I do believe he can actually manipulate them and with Barry in the comics actually getting the reverse Flash's negative speed force at one point takes over and corrupts him. So I think Nora's most definitely corrupted, so right now she is the reverse Nora, she is this evil version of herself. So look forward to that next episode, I can't wait for it. Alright, so let's go back and talk about some other stuff that happened during this episode. And so this was a big episode for Caitlyn as well. This episode had a lot more than I expected it to initially have. I thought it would just be like 60% Caitlyn and Killer Frost, and then 40%, you know, Iris and Nora. But it had some major jaw-dropping moments that I was not expecting, like I said, with that montage with her going in this, to the negative speed force and that ending scene reflecting season one's reverse flash shot. Oh my god. It's overwhelming. But anyway, let's talk about Caitlyn and her mum. So, they're back together at some point, and they have a nice relationship. I like their back and forth. I think Danielle does a really good job in this episode. And also, we have the return of Icicle, and he wants to make a snow pack, as they used to call themselves, because, you know, their surname is Snow after all. So, they want to essentially all be taken over by the sort of darker sides of themselves and they want to be a family well that's what Icicle wants so he returns in this episode he has a pretty cool fight with Killer Frost they skate out of the building of the Tannhauser offshoot site and it's a pretty cool scene it looked really good and it was very kind of touching in the way it ended but however I don't know how he turned back to normal I know it's that Thomas is inside of him but it seems a little bit cheap also, when Cicada 2 shows up, how the hell did she find them? And number three, Thomas dies. That felt really cheap. It felt really, really super cheap, actually, in this case, with Cicada 2 throwing the dagger. Thomas, supposedly, he's gone away. He's walked away. How the hell did he get back so fast and get in front of the dagger? Doesn't make sense. And I felt like it was a cheap sort of throwaway. And so how the hell did he get there? And I thought his death was kind of not very impactful in the way he died. I thought it was impactful that he died. But I think they could have done it in a much better way. So that was probably my only complaint about the episode was how cheap it felt like with him actually becoming Thomas again and him dying. I just didn't think that was the best way they could have done it. But nevertheless, Caitlin and her mum loved it in this episode. I really, really did. And I look forward to seeing more because at the end of the episode... They reveal that Caitlyn's mum has officially got powers. They didn't see that, but they said if it turns white, she's a meta. Didn't turn white, but it did by the end of the episode. So, is she going to be bad? Is she going to be a threat throughout the rest of the season? Or, I think they're saving it definitely for next season. That would be my guess off the top of my head. So, I look forward to that because I wasn't the biggest fan of Icicle. I don't think the actor was that good, but I think Caitlyn's mum is better, so I'm looking forward to that because they have a nice relationship and imagine Killer Frost versus Killer Frost, but, you know, her, her mum's version, so looking forward to that whenever that happens. So Barry has a few cool moments in this episode as well. He's sort of freaking out all over the episode. It's just him, Sherlock, and Joe trying to do everything. They realise, oh shit, we need Cisco, we need Caitlyn, we need everyone to do this. 
they can't all do it by themselves so that's why the team needs to work together so Cisco's not in this episode that's because Carlos Valdez hasn't been on the set much recently and it seems like they're slowly writing him out the show but yeah so he wasn't around Ralph was in the future with Iris and Cecile was doing some investigations with Ralph prior in the episode and she was babysitting their daughter so you know the team is sort of scattered in this episode but yeah Barry has some cool moments he phases using lightning at the same time it looked really cool it was a nice trick a nice little neat trick and so just before we end this video the ending of the episode had a post credit sort of tag and we see that Grace is using whatever device she took I'm not sure why she needed the device but I guess it's some sort of way to get young Grace to wake up and she says soon Grace soon so I wasn't totally sold on why the hell Cicada 2 showed up I know she needed that but she just came out of nowhere it was just way too convenient in timing that they were all there and Barry fights her and then we have this actual cool pretty cool fight between Caitlyn as Killer Frost and Cicada 2 I actually like that part to do with Cicada but that was it oh my god what an episode I had a few sort of minor issues with it like I said with how Thomas was presented in the episode how he died and how he turned back to normal but holy shit Nora reverse Nora with the red lightning being engulfed by the negative speed force catch me freaking out holy shit all right I'll see you guys later goodbye